Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so at the end of the last one, I said there was something rather definite I need to talk about this time and that if you'd seen the previous vlog, you might have an idea as to what it is. Um, I'm not wearing the same t-shirt as I was a few vlogs ago today. I was sort of tempted, uh, but I figured I don't need to. Um, it's nice that I have that t-shirt in my arsenal, but it's not something that I need in order to, you know, assert my identity. Uh, so, <sighs> here I go. <laughs> um, I discovered what gender fluidity, gender fluidity was um, in my early 20s, 2011-ish, sort of, to be precise. Um, the reason I know that is because 2011 is when I joined the gender fluid group on Facebook that I'm a member of. Um, but like my identity in terms of my gender was something I had been questioning uh, a little bit before that point. Um, during my teens there were definitely times where I would be my sort of male alter ego who, <laughs> in fact, more often than not, when I was like in school or with my friends, it felt more like male alter ego was in control. Um, it was definitely something I was very, very much aware of in my teens. Um, and certainly going into university, it was something I was definitely aware of. Um, I didn't have any clothes that were definitely masculine clothes um but I definitely had items of clothing that I felt were my masculine items or my my boy items um bits and pieces that I would wear that would make me feel more connected to the boy side of me um even though technically they were still technically speaking girl clothes um I would give them like little titles um like there was my joey wheeler jacket there are my seto kaiba trench coats <laughs> um I, I know i know it's like ridiculous and kind of almost borderline more um cosplay than anything else but i liked how i felt when i was wearing them i liked like even though nobody else knew that's what was going on in my head i liked the feeling that it gave me um, very much and sort of like my late teens early 20s like the variety of clothing that I had was very organic it was very all over the place 90% um, of it had been picked up from either charity shops or jungle sales things like that so it was it was a very eclectic collection of clothing which allowed me to sort of express a wider range of myself and a wider range of my personality um, then I sort of have been able to since, <laughs> which kind of sounds odd, um, I, I know, but this sort of all sort of accumulated into um, 2011 um, when I started doing a lot more research about things on the internet. I started coming across terms um, that I'd not heard of before such as pansexuality, I, that's, this is around the same time I discovered about pansexuality as well, um, and then gender fluidity, and like gender fluidity in particular did sort of connect with me, that was the whole reason why I joined the gender fluid group in 2011, but obviously back then, although I was willing to sort of mentally and emotionally embrace the idea that my gender was more fluid, I wasn't at a stage where I was ready to sort of express that in any sort of more definite way. Um, and the gender fluid group that I joined on Facebook had a lot of people who were very clear and very confident in their gender expressions. Um, they were constantly posting these pictures where, you know, they you, you could see 
that they were definitely experimenting with these things, that they were definitely, you know, very self-identifying as somebody who either completely um, went against gender norms or somebody who, and I, I, th I think a few of them were, um, did eventually uh, come to a realisation that they were uh, more trans than they were fluid. Um, but like the group that I joined, they're, they're, they're nice, they're very welcoming, um, very generally a very positive group to be a part of. So I remained a part of it <laughs> um, for all of these, like for the last 10 years, I've remained a part of this group. I, you know, was frequently like liking um, any of the pictures that I came across and reading all the stories and stuff like that. So even though I, I felt, even though I sort of felt at the time, like maybe I wasn't properly fluid because you know this is what fluidity is supposed to look like and I'm not doing that kind of thing um I still connected to the group I still you know wanted to sort of feel like I was aware of that part of myself even though a lot of stuff that would kind of happen over the following 10 years made me very much I, and I do want to say suppress and repress that part of myself um not in like an active kind of way um but i i definitely feel like i i spent like a lot of the time after that because that that was sort of like my initial view on what it can mean to be gender fluid and you know these these individuals were doing stuff that at that point in time I never thought I would be able to do um, for various reasons. Um, I very much, you know, kind of chose to remain silent about how I was really feeling. Um, and in the sort of process of doing that, kind of denied a part of myself that still very much existed. Um, Around this sort of time, it's also when I got in to my previous relationship, which again didn't help matters uh, much at all, um, because certainly like at the start of a relationship, you, you're kind of trying to find out who you are as part of that relationship. Um, and as much as I hate to admit it now, because you know I it was a happy relationship in a lot of ways. But it was a relationship where we didn't really communicate with each other. So there was a lot of stuff on both sides that we weren't necessarily in denial about in, in, our, in our of ourselves, but we weren't communicating these thoughts and feelings to each other. So there was this kind of emotional silence at the heart of the relationship um, where we, we hadn't really connected, we weren't really talking about the things that really mattered. Um, so it, yeah, the, the, it was sort of like this corrosive ball in, in the centre of our relationship and I think it was mutually harmful um, in as much as, you know, we were very affectionate to each other, we were very caring about each other, but because we weren't properly communicating and we were keeping a lot of things from the other person for our own individual reasons um it did it did sort of fester um and it was always going to reach a point where it could not be ignored anymore either from his side of things which is what it ended up being or from my side of things um i think i would have eventually reached a point where a lot of this stuff would have had to resurface and had to um, very much be be explored and be um, tackled and there was every chance that you know a lot of relationships can't necessarily survive that some can and those who can and you know absolutely they do exist they you know can be completely happy relationships but some relationships can't survive that and as I said there, there was a lot of issues with true communication within this relationship which is what makes me suspect it is a relationship that wouldn't necessarily have survived um some of these things coming out from from my end of things as well so the fact that it failed um as sad as it you know is to sort of think about 
is understandable when you realise at the very heart of this relationship were two people who weren't properly communicating and properly expressing themselves with the other person. Um, also around this time is sort of, sort of like uh, near the beginning of, of this relationship is when my health started to become um, a little bit haywire. This is when I was sort of starting to get my chronic pain diagnosis. Um, my weight absolutely ballooned um, because, you know, if you're in pain all the time, <laughs> you, you eat. And I know that sounds like an excuse. Um, if you have ever experienced like long term chronic pain, then, yeah, it, it's not, you know, it's not that person being lazy. It's not that person um, being greedy or whatever else. There is a psychological toll to being in that much pain, that much physical pain all the time. Um, and eating is a comfort. Eating is absolutely a comfort. It, it's one of those things that you can do, that you have control over. Um, and like, even though you, you know it's not the best thing for you, it, it's one of those situations that when you sort of you, you get into it, um, it's very hard to to then stop, um, especially like and it's it's a counterproductive way of dealing with chronic pain because quite often having more weight um, on your joints or having more weight on various parts of your body can increase the amount of pain that you're in, um, which then causes you to eat more, which then causes more pain, and it just becomes this really really horrendous cycle to be in. And I was I was in that cycle for a number of years. Um, and the only thing that sort of broke that cycle for me was, I think I've mentioned this before, was when um, I managed to go through a phase of physio, which improved the pain enough that I felt like I could start seriously looking at, you know, doing various light exercises and being a bit more in control of what I was eating. And I did lose quite a bit of weight. Um, but yeah, you, you're talking like the, the last 10 years of my life, you're talking about a very complicated period of time where there was a lot of other stuff going on. Um, and I was literally sort of just getting into a sort of more stable point, um, a point where I could probably have started thinking about and, and looking at you know, all of these self questions, because obviously the thoughts hadn't gone from my head. They were just not as important as everything else going on in my life at the time. Um, but I was sort of like getting towards this, uh, very much getting towards this, uh, this point of maybe starting to question myself again. When my grandmother, when my grandfather died, and then my rabbit died, and then my relationship ended, and. It was a lot. It was less than a year of one thing after another with very little time to sort of deal with the previous one before the next thing um, kind of hit. Um, and yeah, it, it was an, another thing that kind of just brought everything to a halt. Um, and yeah, it, it was basically a very crazy time in my life, then into a very difficult time in my life, where once again, thinking about this stopped being a priority. Um, it was just easier to kind of ignore the thoughts and the feelings that I was having. And they did come out a little bit because uh, I did have a little bit of a fling after my last relationship, I think I've mentioned it before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I did have a little bit of a fling um, and that brought out some of the questions I'd been having um, more to like the forefront again. Um, but because of the way that I, that fling ended, um, I decided to focus more on the sexuality side of things. And figuring out properly what my sexuality was, um, just because it felt it felt more pressing, <laughs> you know, um, 
being being in a position where where you are fairly newly single, then having you know that post breakup fling um, with somebody else that kind of makes you realise you've got a lot of questions there still, and you've got a lot of things to sort of figure out there still. Um, it was e- it was an easier thing to sort of to focus on, and you know. It didn't take me that long to kind of really figure it out and sort of really embrace who I was and to sort of free myself up then to finally start thinking about the other thing. Um, As I said, throughout all of this, I was still part of the gender fluid Facebook group. I was still sort of reading other people's stories, liking posts, um, liking pictures, uh, that kind of thing. It was... Just this, this constant thing ticking over in the background um, in the same way that inside of me it was still there. It was still sort of ticking over, but it had been so heavily suppressed at that point um, that like terms like um, demi girl and demi boy started like leaping out to me. Um, terms like grey gender started leaping out to me. It's kind of like yeah, my, my sense of gender is very apathetic. I don't really have a strong sense of what it is. Um, obviously, at that point in time, I didn't realise I'd sort of repressed it quite as much as I had. Um, but sort of like looking back on how I was feeling like a decade previously, um, and a lot of things that I was doing, a lot of things, a lot of things that I wish I could tr- have tried um, sort of a decade ago, kind of made me like as as I've sort of gone through this this process since um has kind of made me realize that no a lot of the apathy that I was feeling was down to you know having this this 10 years of so many other things going on in my life um that I couldn't really focus on this big sort of confusing thing that I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do with um and then lockdown happened so right before the start of lockdown I'm pretty sure I was looking up terms like demigirl and grey gender so it was like right right before we went into lockdown um I was definitely sort of looking into that kind of thing um I was definitely feeling like it was something that I needed to better understand but I, I really didn't know where to start because, as I said, I was, at, I was at a point where I was so apathetic with it all that although I had these questions going on, I had all these thoughts going on, they didn't feel important enough. Um, it, was, it was very much a kind of, well, who cares what's going on inside my head? Um, it doesn't make a difference to anybody else. The only person it makes a difference to is me. And, you know, it, it doesn't bother me um although there was a definite question mark on the end of that um because I think if it didn't bother me I wouldn't have been questioning it um I wouldn't have been looking for answers I wouldn't have been doing this that, or the other I think if it didn't bother me then I would have just kind of left things as they were um but obviously it was bothering me enough even before we went into lockdown that I was definitively questioning stuff and I was definitively looking at stuff and I was definitively thinking about stuff I was just very apathetic in general about it all but I was very apathetic about a lot of things at that point um and then lockdown happened and uh I started writing the five books that I wrote whilst I was still out um and I think even before I'd finished writing the first one, those questions that I'd been having went from being apathetic to being a lot more pressing. And then definitely by the time I'd finished writing the fourth one, I was starting to ask if I was non-binary. Um, and that was sort of, as, as I know, gender fluid can fall under the non-binary category um, but not necessarily not for everybody because um, 
gender outside of the gender binary can be very confusing. <laughs> um, and a lot of it is to do with self-identification and self um, actualization and, you know, what you feel comfortable with and how you feel comfortable identifying. So you can identify as being gender fluid and still not see yourself as being non-binary and vice versa. Um, so at that point, I was kind of like, OK, um, am I non-binary? Am I non-binary gender fluid? Um, you know, am I non-binary grey gender? You know, what's what's going on? How how am I actually thinking about this? Um, and as I went back to work at the end of my, my period of being full health for four and a half months <laughs> and seeing virtually no one in that time, um, obviously I was still questioning a lot of this stuff. I was still very much thinking about a lot of this stuff. Um, so sort of going back to work, yeah, I, I very quickly sort of found myself not able to ignore the, the question anymore. Um, so I started talking to some of my friends. Um, I started buying myself some new clothes. <laughs> um, and like a, a big part of that for me was after I'd lost all of that weight, um, a lot of the tops certainly that I owned were hand-me-downs from my mum. Um, very few of the items of clothing in my wardrobe were things that I'd picked out for myself. Um, sort of since losing the weight. Some of them were. Um, some of them definitely were. Uh, but a lot of it was I I didn't really have my own sense of, of style. I would pick things because it was the easiest thing to sort of pick. Um, half of the stuff were just stuff I, I'd grabbed from Sainsbury's because I needed clothes because you, <laughs> you lose like five stone, you need clothes. <laughs> um, so a lot of the stuff wasn't necessarily picked because I particularly liked it or I particularly connected with it. It was just I needed clothes. Um, no, no uh, clothes shopping in general was something I had found extremely stressful. Um, I would like literally walk into a place and be like, none of this is me and then walk straight back out again um, without actually even looking at anything. To, to be perfectly honest with you, like most of the time I wouldn't I wouldn't even look at anything. I would just walk straight back out again because I just couldn't deal with it. Um, so yeah, the like buying clothes online is not like the best way of buying clothes. <laughs> but we're we we we're, we're still in a pandemic, so um, it was the best option available to me at the time. Um, so yeah, so my, my, my first sort of initial phase with it was, okay, let's figure out what my sense of style at this point in my life actually is. Um, let's try to infuse this wardrobe with stuff I like the looks of. Um, instead of like staring at all of these things that I really want, why not buy a few of these things that I really want and not worry about it? I mean, I, I had a little bit of savings, so, there was basically there was no reason for me not to sort of update my wardrobe um, and do some of these things that I want wanted to do. Um, and like some of it, yeah, I really do. I really, really like um, all of the tops. Uh, I, I definitely like all of the tops. Um, some of them I like more than others. Um, but I like that I've got a good range of things to wear top wise now, which um, I haven't had uh, for a while. <laughs> my mum has a very specific sort of style, um, which sort of like crosses between like the, the summer stuff and the winter stuff. She's got a very particular sort of style. Um, so it was quite nice to sort of free myself up a little bit again and, and give myself a, a range of stuff to wear again. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely sort of helped. Um, from like in the middle of the summer I've been wanting to cut my hair short like properly short um I've never really had it this sort of short before um but definitely sort of like the middle of the summer was when I was kind of like yeah I want I want to just cut my hair short um I was just getting like if, if I if I felt like I could have done it neatly I would have done it myself and that was kind of the stage that I was at in fact there were several times where I was like this sort of close to just lopping it all off um but I was like no if, if I'm gonna get it done I want it to get it done properly um so I did <laughs>
Um, and I was very ecstatic, like, when I sort of, like, was able to sort of look in the mirror and for the first time not just see the girl that I'd been, um, you know, the, the girl default that I'd been. Um, I was very much nothing wrong with being the girl default. Um, but there was, there was something about the default that had made me very wary about exploring all the things I'd wanted to, to explore and doing all the things that I'd wanted to try because I'd always felt like the girl default was very noticeable and very strong and very definite and very, you know, almost impossible to, to ignore. Um, since then, the sort of the more neutral default that I've got, um, it feels it feels more comfortable. It feels it feels like I can do things that you know I can dress in a way that's very feminine and and look sort of tomboyishly feminine, which is like my version of feminine anyway. Um, or I can sort of dress a bit more boyishly and sort of get away with that look. Um, and yeah, it, it's much more comfortable for how I want to express myself and how I want to feel about myself. Um, and, you know, it's been, <laughs> uh, see, November is when I got it cut and we're now in March. So it's been like four or five months um, since I made the change with, with the length of my hair and I really like it still. I want it to be tidied up. <laughs> I want the hairdressers to reopen so I can get it tidied up. Um, yeah, this was all sort of very much part of the process. Um, likewise, I started coming out and work in November, so this was after I got my hair cut. Um, because I wanted to sort of figure myself out, and in order to do that, there's only so much you can sort of do in isolation on your own or with a small number of friends. Um, after a certain point, you very much need the social engagement and the social aspect of it to sort of come back in so you can figure yourself out more and you can become more comfortable with the decisions that you're making. Um, at that point, all I was really definitely certain of was that I was not non-binary, potentially gender fluid, um, and that I liked feeling like I was both. I liked presenting in a way where I felt like I was both, I like the androgynous kind of look. So even, you know, when I'm in a dress, I prefer it when I'm in a dress and I look more androgynous um, and, you know, rather than just strictly feminine or strictly masculine. I like that sort of, that very in between, that sort of might take a second glance. I mean, I don't know if I pull that off <laughs> because of the body that I do, unfortunately because of the body that I do have. Um, I think most of the time I don't necessarily pull it off as well as I would like. Um, but I have explored ways of helping with that, um, which, you know, at, at the end of the day, the, it was more important how it makes me feel. And I like the style and I like the clothing that I wear more when I feel like I'm more androgynous in it than if I feel more strictly one or the other. So, yeah, I... Uh, Definitely when I was sort of starting to come out to people in work at the beginning of November, that was very much where I was at with it. And that feeling has very much uh, persisted. And although I continue to use uh, the gender fluid description for myself up until the beginning of this year, I was also starting to use by gender as a more comfortable term. Um, because I am both. I am both boy and girl, man and woman. Um, there's a little bit of a fluctuation between how much of, I'm feeling one way or the other at certain times. So sometimes I'm feeling more one way, sometimes I'm feeling more the other way. Um, but I am always both. It's just slight variations depending on my mood, depending on what I'm doing. Um, Depending on the type of people that I'm dealing with in general, I tend to feel 
more masculine at home when I where I'm in control of my environment and more feminine in work where I'm having to use my customer service skills. Um, I'm not saying that good customer service skills are more feminine. I'm just saying for me, my customer service skills need me to be more in touch with my feminine side because that is the side of me that has dealt with the customers <laughs> when my mask side has been more suppressed. Dealing with like my my um, co-workers ten- has always tended to be my more masculine side. Not always, but has tended to be my more masculine side. So there is like a little bit of a fluctuation going on um, in work, depending on whether I'm dealing more with customers or dealing more with the crew. Um, but in, in general, I'm, I'm probably slightly more feminine in work because of the environment that I'm in and because years of training yourself to behave in a certain way is like really hard to like just completely ignore. Um, and as I said, there's something about dealing with customers which just, it feels more natural to sort of rely on my feminine side for that rather than my, my masculine side because it's, it's more professional. But that's just me. And some people will find completely the opposite and that's absolutely fine. There's, there's no right or wrong way to identify or to feel about about these kind of things um but it is definitely who I am and and how I am and how I sort of want to go on moving forward from here um I've come out officially to my family at this point I've come out officially on Facebook at this point so all the people who kind of need to know now know um but yeah no i i identify as non-binary by gender um there'll be times where you'll see me in a dress there'll be times where you'll see me in a t-shirt or just a top or you know whatever else it will depend on what kind of day that i'm having i'm a very lazy dresser so i don't necessarily dress by gender i will just dress by Oh, that's clean. (laughs) That's clean. I could wear that. Um, So, yeah, that's how I'm going to continue dressing going forward. um, There might be some days where we're like, oh, no, I really fancy wearing that today. Um, And other days where I'll be like, "Uh, I I don't really care. I'm just going to shovel whatever whatever I lay my hands on first. (laughs) Because that's that's just how I've always been. That's why I quite often end up wearing the same things um, quite a lot because they'll go through the wash and then it'll be at the top of the pile again. So of course I'm going to wear it again. (laughs) I'm not going to dig through my pile of clothing just for that one item of clothing I think might exist somewhere at the bottom. I'm just going to do whatever's easiest. (laughs) Um, But... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think I'm happy with how this vlog has gone. I apologize that it's sort of a bit been a bit rambly and it's sort of taken me a while to kind of get to the point um a little bit. Um but yeah, I'm I'm reasonably happy with this vlog. So okay, I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting I hope you're looking forward to seeing what I'm going to be talking about next time at this point in time I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about next time um so yeah until next time see ya (laughs) if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe see ya